Most gym advice is either outdated or flat out wrong. A 2021 study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research found that most people are lifting way too light and never even get close to the reps that actually build muscle. I'm Dr. John Go. I'm an eye surgeon in LA, and I've lost 75 pounds and kept it off. I only train 20 minutes a day, and I still manage to get and stay jacked. This is the exact system I use and what I teach busy professionals who want real results without wasting time. It's a practical, science-based lifting framework built around real life. After 20 years of trial and error, I developed an evidence-based system, but if you wanna adapt my framework to your life, then you'll need to understand the science behind how muscle is actually built. Here's the bottom line. Muscle isn't built just from showing up or breaking a sweat. It's built when you create enough mechanical tension in your muscle fibers. Forget about chasing the pump or creating micro tears in your muscle. What actually drives muscle growth is recruiting more muscle motor units. That is your brain calling in more muscle fibers to handle that load. Let me explain. Imagine your muscle fibers like a long row of light switches. When you start a set, your body turns on just a few switches. It's only using the minimum number of muscle fibers it needs. But as you keep going and the weight starts to feel heavier and heavier, your body starts flipping on more and more switches to help out. If you push hard enough, close to failure, you finally light up the whole circuit. That's where growth happens. But if you stop too early, before you hit those last two to three hard reps, you never flip the whole system on. And if you don't flip the full circuit, you just don't grow. This isn't just a metaphor, it's how the body works. Your body recruits muscle fibers in order of need. It only brings in the big, fast twitch fibers, the ones that actually grow when things get really hard. So the goal isn't just doing 12 reps. The goal is getting close enough to failure that your body has no choice but to activate the entire system. That's where mechanical tension peaks and that's where real growth starts. We'll call this training with enough effort. So now you know that muscle growth only happens when you push close to failure, when the full system flips on. The real question is, how do you know if you're actually pushing hard enough? That's where the idea of reps and reserves comes in, or RIR. Think of it like this, RIR is your fuel gauge. Each set starts with a full tank, say 10 reps worth of energy. And as you go, you burn more fuel. If you stop the set when the gauge still reads half full, your body doesn't get the signal to change. But when the tank is almost empty, when there's only one or two reps left in the tank, that's when your body kicks into growth mode. Here's a hypothetical to help illustrate. Let's say you're bench pressing. Imagine the guy next to you all of a sudden gets in your face and he threatens your life and tells you you need to keep going or else. What rep would that be? Assuming reasonable form, of course. That rep is considered failure. The idea of reps in reserve is how many reps short of that you stop. So stop one rep short of failure, that's one rep in reserve. Stop two short, that's two reps in reserve. Most people stop way too early. Studies show that the average gym goer thinks they're training hard, but often stops four, five, or even six reps short of failure. And if you stop that early, you're not flipping on the full circuit. Remember the light switch analogy? Your brain only turns on big, fast twitch fibers, the ones that actually grow, when the weight gets hard. And if you quit before that point, half the switches stay off, and that means muscle growth, it doesn't happen. For big, heavy compound lifts like squats, deadlifts, and bench press, aim for one to three reps in reserve. For isolation lifts like curls or lateral raises, aim for zero to two reps in reserve. One good hack that I use daily is the idea of lifting velocity. If the speed at which you're lifting significantly slows down, it's a good sign that you're starting to approach failure. This will help you gauge if you're actually getting to the reps that actually spur muscle growth. So now you're training with real effort, but how do you keep improving over time? That's where progressive overload comes in. Your muscles, they adapt to the stress you put on them. But if that stress doesn't increase, they just stop adapting. Makes sense, right? Think of building muscle like climbing a staircase. Each workout is a step. If you stay on the same step week after week, there's no reason for your body to change. It already knows what to expect. But when you increase the weight, the reps, or even the way that you lift, you force your muscles to take another step up. You're demanding more, and that's how growth happens. Now, there are several ways to take the next step up. You can add more weight, you can add more reps per set, you can do more total sets per week, you can decrease the rest time between sets, or even move the weight more explosively. If you're a beginner, 
just focus on slowly adding more weight over time. But eventually, that stops working. When it does, you can keep climbing the staircase by manipulating reps, sets, or intensity instead. Other ways you can progressively overload are by utilizing techniques like forced reps, partial reps, static holds, drop sets. But honestly, I don't really recommend these unless you're an experienced lifter who's close to your genetic potential. So you're now lifting with enough effort and making steady progress. But how many reps per set should you actually be doing? Let's talk about rep ranges and volume next. Rep ranges are how many reps you're doing per set. Volume is how many sets you're doing per week. Now, Traditionally, it's been recommended to shoot for 5 to 15 reps per set, with the lower end targeting strength, the middle hypertrophy, and the higher end endurance and calorie burning. But here's where it gets interesting. Recent studies show that muscle growth is similar both at the low and ultra high rep ranges, as long as the effort is the same, meaning you still need to get close to failure no matter how many reps you're doing. Good in theory, but here's why I don't train at the higher rep ranges. The higher your reps, the harder it is to know if you're really pushing yourself and getting to those final reps in reserve. I can pretty easily tell I'm close to failure when I'm struggling through my sixth rep doing barbell squats, but 30 of them at a lower weight? Not only does it just suck to grind those out, but it's just way harder to tell that you're at one to three reps in reserve when you're doing that many. So think of rep ranges like a volume dial on a stereo. Low reps are loud with heavy bass. You feel it fast. Higher reps are like softer volume. You've got to turn the dial way up to get the same impact. But no matter what rep range you're in, you've got to crank the dial in your max to light up the muscle fibers that actually grow. If you stop too early, the music's too quiet, your body doesn't hear the signal. It doesn't adapt. That's why I tell my clients to always stick to the 6 to 15 rep range. Enough reps to build volume, but not so many that you lose track of effort. For heavy compound lifts, stay on the lower end of the 5 to 10 reps. And for isolation lifts, you can go higher, like 10 to 15 reps, since they're safer and easier to recover from generally. Now let's talk about volume. This is where a second analogy helps. Think of each muscle group like a bucket. To grow, you've got to fill that bucket with enough hard, effective sets week after week. But the size of your bucket, that depends on your level of experience. Beginners have smaller buckets, so five to 10 sets per week is plenty. Intermediate lifters need more, more like 10 to 20 sets per week. Advanced lifters need the biggest buckets. They need 20 to 25 sets per muscle group to keep progressing. This is for big compound lifts like bench, squat, and deadlift. For isolation lifts, you don't need as much. Aim for three to 10 sets per week per muscle group, depending on your goals. And remember, only count the sets that you push close to failure. Warm-up sets don't fill the bucket. So now you know how many reps to do and how many sets to aim for. The next step is choosing the right exercises. First off, Let's define compound versus isolation exercises. Compound movements are movements across multiple joints, like squats, deadlifts, and bench press. Isolation lifts, on the other hand, are exercises across single muscle groups and can fill in any weak points. These are like bicep curls, tricep extensions, lateral raises, calf raises. Think of your physique like a building under construction. Compound lifts are like your steel beams and concrete foundation. Isolation lifts are like the trim, the lighting, the paint, the fixtures. Compound lifts build the mass, isolation lifts fine tune the shape. But the mistake most people make is that they treat isolation work like it's mandatory, it's not. Here's how to use isolation work wisely. Make them a maximum about 20% of your weekly sets. Use them to target weak points, strengthen injury prone areas or lagging muscles. And if you're short on time, you can skip them to prioritize the compound lifts. Remember, compound lifts create the foundation of your physique. For example, I do more lateral raises than most because I've had shoulder issues in the past. But if I'm pressed for time, I drop them. Isolation lifts are useful, but they're the finishing touches not the frame. Now that you know what to train, let's talk about how you should organize it. Your split should match your life, not the other way around. People overcomplicate splits. Workout splits are just how you divide your weekly training volume. It's like meal prepping. Some people cook fresh every day, others batch cook and live off the leftovers. The best plan is the one that fits your life. What matters isn't what split you choose, it's that you train with enough effort, with enough volume, and you have enough recovery. Bro splits, working out one muscle a day, is like cooking one dish and tossing the rest. 
push-pull legs, upper, lower, and full body splits are more efficient. You're using your ingredients multiple times per week, so nothing goes to waste. Here's the cheat sheet. If you can only work out twice a week, try a full body workout both days. Wanna work out three times a week? Try a hybrid split, upper, lower, then a full body day. Six times a week, do push-pull legs twice, but with variations that we'll talk about. Build your split around your schedule, not the other way around. We'll get into sample splits for each schedule, but first, what if you miss a day? It's not the end of the world, just don't miss two. Missing one workout isn't the problem. It's when that one turns into two. It's like knocking over the first domino. You miss Monday, then Tuesday's chaotic, so you miss that one. And before you know it, you hit Friday, and you haven't worked out all week. James Clear calls this the don't miss twice rule. Miss one workout, that's all right. Reset and move forward. Miss two in a row, that's the start of a new bad habit that you don't want. Consistency is built by catching the fall fast. Now let's get into those sample splits and how to apply everything we've just covered in real life. Let's say you're slammed with work, travel, family, just life, but you still wanna train. This next plan is built exactly for that. If you only have time to train twice a week, this plan gives you results with minimal time. Each session takes about an hour, but you only need two total per week. This is the two day full body split. Here are the three keys to this plan. Day one, focus on heavier compound lifts with lower reps, higher weight. Day two, focus on volume and isolation work, utilizing higher reps and lighter weight. And lastly, be sure to separate the workouts by about two to three rest days to allow for enough recovery. Here's the sample plan on screen. This is the highest efficiency plan I use with my clients. If you can give me two quality sessions a week, you'll grow. But if you've got six days a week to train and you want more flexibility, let's talk about the classic, push-pull legs. This split is great if you love routine, want clear recovery days, and enjoy training specific muscle groups more often. This is a super flexible setup. Each day focuses on a movement pattern. Push day includes chest, shoulders, and triceps. Pull day includes back and biceps. Leg day, you'll hit quads, hamstrings, and glutes. In this example workout, the exercises are split into a heavier day focusing on lower reps and a lighter day focusing on higher reps. But another way to approach this is by targeting vertical push-pull movements on the first day. Think lat pull-downs, weighted pull-ups, shoulder press, and horizontal push-pull movements on the second days, like horizontal rows, lat bench, etc. For legs, this would look like focusing on quad dominant and glute dominant movements across two leg days, like squats versus deadlifts. You hit every muscle twice a week and you get variety across the whole week. Different rep ranges, different angles, and different goals. It's hard to beat for long-term growth. But if six days a week sounds like overkill and three is more realistic, here's my favorite split for busy professionals. This is the hybrid upper lower full body split. You get to train three times a week hit each muscle group twice, and have room to recover. The first day is an upper body, the second day is lower body, and third day is full body. The upper and lower days focus more on the lower end of the rep spectrum, and the full body day focuses more on the higher end of the rep spectrum. This is a plan that fits life, travel, weird work shifts, unpredictability. You get frequency, balance, and recovery without needing to live in the gym. Now that you've seen the sample plans for two, three, and six days a week, let me show you what I actually do and why it works so well. I don't train for an hour. I don't drive to the gym. Here's how I stay jacked with just 20 to 30 minutes a day. I train six days a week using the push-pull leg structure, but I split it into micro workouts. Each session is 20 to 30 minutes max. I alternate vertical and horizontal pressing and pulling and hinge and squat patterns for legs. No fluff, no wasted time, just consistency. Each day, I just focus on one to two main exercises with two to three warm-up sets each. I target five to eight hard total sets, five to eight reps per set, and I'm always shooting for close to failure, one to two reps in reserve. If I have time, I'll throw in isolation work for my arms, my abs, my calves, lateral raises, etc. But the foundation and focus is always built on compound movements and consistency. This works so well because it's short, it's repeatable, and most importantly, it fits into my life. Also, some people scroll TikTok between sets. I'm walking on the treadmill, scripting, editing, watching surgical videos. This allows me to be productive, but also burn even more calories without affecting my workout performance. For me, 
finding 60 to 90 minutes a day for workouts, it just isn't doable. But a 20 minute workout before work, I can definitely fit that into my life. I highly recommend everyone to invest in a walking desk and a home gym if possible. Even if it's just some weights or a door pull up bar, I'll link what I use in the description below. With these frameworks in mind, let's touch on one last important topic, rest periods. You're not lazy for resting longer, you're recharging the system, but you also don't wanna waste time. Think of each set as a sprint. You can't sprint every 30 seconds and expect peak performance. You need recovery time to perform at your peak again. Otherwise, your reps just become junk volume. A good place to start for compound lifts is to rest between three and five minutes between sets. And for isolation lifts, to rest about one minute between sets. Remember to adjust based on feel. Some days you need more time and other days you can bounce back quicker. Recovery isn't wasted time. It's what makes the next set count. One final super important tip, especially if you're just starting out, get help with your form. Whether it's a coach or a lifting buddy, it's worth it. Injury is the last thing you want, believe me. To this end, it's usually easier for beginners to start with machines rather than free weights or cables. Machines just provide for more stability, decreasing injury risk. And don't forget to warm up before your heavy working sets. These warm up sets are done at lower weight and far from failure. Two to three warm up sets before a working set is usually what I shoot for. You now have all of the foundational knowledge to build muscle efficiently, even with limited time. But remember, Building muscle is only part of the story. The most important part is nutrition. Check out my video here, 12 Habits to Stay Under 12% Body Fat, where I'll dive deeper into nutrition. Take care.